So in a couple of cases, I need to build uh, out very large numbers of machines with, with an operating system on them and not much effort on my part. Uh, so as it happens, we now got the, got the task at, at my work of doing something of the same sort and we're going, but it's got to be compatible with, uh, with uh, OpenStack. So, and we tried a, a number of these. This is the first one that actually was any good. So it's a little specific to Ubuntu, uh, but it actually is a bare metal installer. I wonder what happens if I press this button. No? Yeah, all right. So, sometimes you actually have to rent out uh, real machines. Uh, one of my large customers handled literally dozens of machines a day being installed in data centers over in about three places in the U.S. and not non-continental U.S. And they needed real metal for some of these. Uh, a lot of them were database engines, and a lot of them were performance intensive. And so, you know, I, it would be trivial to do it in virtual machines, but then I get about one virtual machine per real machine. <laughs> and some of the real machines are, if the Intel's, they're pretty damn small. So we're going like, okay, so what about bare metal? In my particular case, it's building OS images and we're gonna have containers on them on a relatively small machine. But we need to do a lot of them. And it takes me about, 15 to 20 minutes using, say, a Dell Lights Out Management Board and a, and a on-disk image of the, of the CD to install anything. Well, this doesn't scale. What I want is something where I go pixie boot the machine, put the minimal image on it, that's it. That's the only manual work I want to do. Then I give it, I use a process to give it to a user, to sysadmin, or I drop it in the OpenStack cluster. And there are t good tools for manipulating these inside an OpenStack cluster. And then the other usual task is, oh yeah, well, we gotta scrub the damn thing and put another copy of Windows on it because it's buggered. One of the things we do not require is some of the feature set. For example, we don't want to accidentally allocate a machine to Drew, say, and then blow it up. Because he knows where I live, and he'll come and kill me. Uh, especially, I don't want to do that by accident. I might want to do it as a joke. Uh, I don't want to have to run DHCP on major corporate networks. I want to run it on little ones. Uh, my current employer has trouble not having DHCP running, because people keep firing it up unintentionally and trying to take over machines <laughs> that Pixie boot. And we'd like to use something other than just Ubuntu. So here's how the actual process works. I have to steal a machine and install Metal as a Service on it manually. But that's what I was trying to avoid. But I do have to do it once. I register, I want to register the machines with mass, commission them into a database, deploy them to the sysadmins, and then when they're done, steal them back. This is, this is the manual step that I keep trying to avoid, but I still have to do it. I gotta at least get the server up that way. Then, then I get to the first step to start to scale. I connect to the machine via a, a lights out management. I say, I want you to pixie boot off this interface, which I physically wired uh, to my server. So that's LE0 only in many of the machines. Press F12, and that's the last time I have to be on the, on the console monitor for this particular piece of equipment. At least until the install process completes. Doesn't always. If it doesn't, I'm back in the monitor debugging it. So, once I've done that, I can actually see it in a GUI, and I can hand it off to someone else 
to have them do massive, massive amounts of stuff or small fiddles. Uh, this particular case, uh, Fabric Zero is my throwaway network, uh, 17218. And then this is my actual wire to the rest of the world network, 172.29.100. Uh, which I have to be a little careful of, and I this is the one that I am not to be be running uh, uh, DHCP on. This one is only connected to equipment of mine. I don't care if I'm running DHCP on it. So, in the GUI, I say, "There's a machine. Press the commit button, commission it." it becomes ready. That means it's going to load a, a basic operating system that I specified on it, uh, boot the machine up, and ends up in a state whereby I can hand it off to a sysadmin. This has the most obscure command set I've ever seen this side of an engineering device. But what you really have is three states. You have a new machine that has pixie booted and is in the commissioning state, it gets to a ready state where it's useful. I can deploy it. It goes through several more states and ends up deployed. At this point, it belongs to somebody, not me. And then I can release it back to the ready state for as many times as I want to do that. It probably took me three days to figure out what the DFA was because, of course, they give you tutorials and no references. Sir. Uh, so when you go back from the reads to ready, does yep. that hurt the system? Does it allow to reemerge it? It's 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 got it's got a a a, a, a option that says scrub it. I want to reimage. Okay. That set initial that set when you bring it into the it, when you when you ready it, uh, and you do that, typically yes, and you have it scrub it when it gives it back to you, because you don't necessarily. I mean, I might want to know what's on the machines, but I'm not supposed to. <laughs> you deploy them to the sysadmins. That gives the machine a bunch of SS, SSH keys, certainly mine, my administrator keys, plus the system administrator that's going to take over its key. That's how they get onto it. That's how they take it over from me. Uh, you can change the disk and the IP settings. Uh, press the deploy button. Yeah, it worked. Now it belongs to this sysadmin. They can SSH to it. They, they log on as an ordinary user, Ubuntu at some IP. At that point, uh, using SSH and using keys, at that point, they can take it away from me. So here, here's a picture of me getting ready to set up one of the machines. This is, this is, our, this is our, our test lab. So I've got three machines deployed, and this one was a little broken, and we managed to get uh, half the memory to work and brought it up again. They're not on, on support anymore. Too bad. Uh, so 103, uh, which would mean we gave them mass is the name it gave them, uh, are ready to go. If I look at it, at its network interface, on this network, which is on the bootable device, it's auto assign. I got no control over this. On the network that's accessible to the rest of the world, it's a, I can set it up. I can static assign it to the externally visible IP address so it can get out to the world and get back again. Uh, so, so that the system then can actually use, use it and install stuff on it. And it does have two as yet unconfigured interfaces. Sir? Um, what can you identify that you address? The MAC address on the primary inter interface. <laughs> so yes, if you're the sysadmin and you change the MAC address, you will drive me nuts. There are a few bugs. It's mostly impossible to screw it up. Once you've figured out what the DFA is, uh, 
you know, you can keep going between states until you until you got it drawn on the wall uh, without screwing anything up. But there are a few ones. If you specify static assignment, as I did on the previous page, it will look at the net mask and the IP address, and it will suggest an address to you, and it will always suggest dot one. And so, we didn't notice. And we used it, and we booted the machine, and then it went, boink. Nothing works. <laughs> it was fighting with the router over, over the router's address. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> After about several minutes, it disambiguated itself. It kept that node three off and said, no, you fool, that doesn't work. Didn't tell me what, it was, what was wrong. <laughs> we discovered that the next morning when we sobered up. But it <laughs> It does recover from stupid errors by sysadmins and allows me to give it out to the site SA. At this point, if I was taking a machine of that sort from this pool, the first thing I would do is set it up to boot from disk and not, DH, not use DHCP. Secondly, remove the keys of the other guys from the Ubuntu account so they can't SSH in, and then create my local accounts and continue. I might change the MAC address if I'm particularly evil. I might end up on the MAC address of some machine that's about to be re-imaged. That might not be smart. For our particular use in OpenStack, we need to then go on to the next step of installing all sorts of stuff. We try Juju. It's completely opaque. We don't know what it did, but it seemed to work. Uh, or Chef, it's completely obvious, and we don't know why it didn't work. Uh, or we've been trying Metal, sorry, Fuel, and it seems to work and tells us what it did. So we're probably going to settle on that. But at this point, I've got a physical machine. I can put it in my cluster. I can use it for something. Go. Yeah, it's specifically for OpenStack, and it's for putting up OpenStack clusters fairly briskly. Uh, it's a it's a GUI plus a write write a config file and, and press do ten thousand. And the final step is to is to release a machine to take a back into the pool. If I was building a real, uh, you know cloud service that might be relevant. In actual fact, I'm just building machines for a company. It's, it's Kobo, which is owned by Racket and my employer. Uh, so a few hundred machines, we don't actually manage it as a, as a cloud, although we do use some cloud tools on it. And like I said, it's pretty good unless you make a mistake. And it has been an absolute joy for me to go, and re-image a Windows box. Because <laughs> we have a few of those. Mm -hmm. There are some limitations. Uh, this is right now a predominantly Ubuntu one. But it will have some interesting architectures. Like, would you like to boot Ubuntu on a system 390? That will do it. I don't know how many you're going to have in your data center. Probably not 200. But it's an interesting tool. For a single machine, yeah. for DISA, the Defense uh, Industry something administration in the States, which does hundreds of machines in a week, th this is something that they, they, built, a co they built their own. This is, the, this is the right kind of, of device. And if you're in the renting out bare metal, it's probably a useful product. For our purposes, it's good enough to give me a stable starting point, so it's not a not a mysterious case of uh, what do I start with with this piece of shit. But then it stops, and it leaves you with just the basic machine, and it's up to you how you get to the next step. So that 
has been my team's task for the last two weeks of trying out different things until we find, found someone that didn't actually cause us you know, heart attacks. <laughs> And actually, it's surprising how much you can do with a collection of chef recipes when one of your vice presidents is a major chef con contributor and does all-nighters when stuff, stuff breaks. <laughs> so, that's math. Questions? Um, yes. Don't try it on a Dell of the era that I'm using. Uh, the Dell part of it buggered up something awful, and there are bugs, there are Ubuntu bugs on that, absolutely fixed in later equip mode. Uh, be mildly cautious that the network, I mean, we use v V6 networks for the non-connected nets, by preference, because we want to learn V6, but I'm mildly reluctant to inflict the real networking guys with my version of a V6 connection, so, yeah. if you have the absolute, if, if you have the minimal expertise, it's easy to do in, on a private net. If you have non-trivial expertise, then then uh, then you should use it. AWS? Yeah, it's for building AWSs. Yeah. This is this this is what Ubuntu uses to build the hardware that's behind their commercial clouds, which are retailed by Rackspace. <laughs> so Rackspace, although Rackspace is trying fuel too. So eh, we'll see. <laughs> Um, I think they're more general, and I don't have enough uh, ex experience with them to have an opinion. I, mean, I think mass mass is a little biased towards a single mission and a simple GUI. And the mission overlaps. It's a Venn diagram. The mission overlaps with mine enough that it's worthwhile. 